Page 59, a lead sheet for Go Tell Aunt Rhody. Well, this is interesting. Let's talk about lead sheets. They can be a lot of fun. Unfortunately, when I was little, I was not taught much about theory. I wasn't really taught the scales the right way. I was taught, <laughs> so I never really got into this like I should have, and that's unfortunate. It wasn't until much later when I had to do theory in college and you're getting all this music theory thrown at you that you begin to understand and think. Then you realize how much you missed out when you were little because you weren't taught that stuff when you were little. <sighs> well, enough about me. Let's talk about lead sheets. A lead sheet is simply put where they give you the melody and they give you the names of the chords for the harmony and you make up everything to go, you play the melody and make up the accompaniment yourself. Uh, you can get books of lead sheets, they're called fake books. I have a few where it's just one song after another. They give you the, like on page 59, they give you the melody with the chords and then you make up stuff to go along with it. One of the people at the piano club this last month uh, one of the music teachers played a really nice piece from a lead sheet. All she had was the melody and the chords and she just made it up and, went, and it sounded wonderful. So the chord name are the capital letters for the chords and they're above here they're in red or orange or whatever that color is. Uh, guitar players use these a lot. If you have a guitar player around and you've been playing and they see those they would improvise on the guitar for the well. It's the same thing for piano. You improvise on the piano for these chords. And there's different things. We'll talk about that. Now they show you at the bottom of the page what the chords are for Aunt Rhody. In theory you should already know what these chords are. We've had them before. And hopefully you know what the scales are. That helps too. But at the beginning, look at Aunt Rhody here. At the beginning you see the G. So you, in the left hand you play the G chord somewhere here or here matter where you play it, it's up to you. What does it sound good? And then two measures later you get a D chord and then back to the G chord and then third line down it's a G minor chord. It's the same as a G chord, just lower the middle. Then D chord, G minor. So just practice know what these chords are. So you get the melody First, figure out what the melody is. You want to make sure you can play the melody correctly because you're going to have enough to think about with the chords. You don't want to, be, have to think about melody too. But once you've got that figured out, then add the chords to them. You can at first just do the block chords so you've got them. And as I said, it doesn't matter where you play them. Just play the chord. Then you can play them as whole notes. the whole thing to make sure you can do that. Then if you want you can try, see we're using root position and maybe we don't want to move around that much. Well I can invert some of these and I don't have to move around so much. I can go here, that's it. If I take the D chord and I put the D on top, that's still a D chord, but I didn't move around so much. I went from here, the G to the D. That's one way of doing it. There's other ways too. I mean, the point is I'm not moving so much. And the same thing on third on the third. And I do a D. Again, that's one way of doing it. Maybe I don't want whole notes in the left hand. I can play half notes. Something, if I play it right. Maybe it's a combination of whole notes and half notes, or maybe I want some quarter notes in there. I can experiment with the rhythm and have some fun with the rhythm. Mix that in there too. It's up to me and my imagination, which isn't that wonderful, but hopefully you've got imagination there too. Maybe you don't want block chords. You play broken chords. I can do this. I can do this. Any nut, there's all kinds of patterns for broken chords. Maybe it's here. Whatever. Or the what was I doing here?
something like that. That it's another pattern. Uh, it's out. Uh, there's, as I said, there's all kinds of ways of playing broken chords in different patterns. How much do you want to move your hands around? Because we can get there too. So you just have fun and play around with and experiment. Try in different parts of the keyboard. Maybe they want the melody up here for a while. Here and put the. You have to try it, you know. You can even alter the rhythm of the melody too if you want. I mean, it's an arrangement. It's just go nuts and, and let, just go with it. There's no right or wrong answers. If it sounds good, it's okay. If you like it, good enough. If somebody else hears you and likes it, even better. <laughs> I'd like to, I'm not going to do it play with me. You can do this melody on your own. I will do the duet part at the bottom in case you want to play along make something up and you want to play along with the duet part, I'll provide it for you. So I'm going to go ahead and play that and you can do whatever you want with the top part. So I'm going to give four counts and then play it. I'm taking this a little faster so it's look at the metronome. It's one, two, three, four. One, two, three, two. So we're going to go about that fast. So here we go. One, two, ready, go. Mm -hmm. 